Hey, good morning. This is Diary of a Coach, episode 256. 256. How are you this morning? How are you winding down? The Christmas is getting closer. Yay. This morning, somebody was like, Coach, I need to see you. How far, how far, how far? What can I be in the office? I said, Sometime next to you, maybe by Wednesday. And he goes, Wednesday? Wednesday is Christmas. I said, oh, really? Hmm. I didn't even take notes. So, while some of you are already, you know, in the Christmas element, some of us are missing the Christmas dates. It's a beautiful morning, people. How are you today? Today's diary is titled, Parents Should Listen to Their Kids. Parents Should Listen to Their Kids. Last night, I had the privilege of discussing in an online class with over 170 parents of a school over 170 parents of a school and it was a beautiful engagement it was it was very interesting very interesting engagement and we shared some perspectives i thought i should share with us this morning the first thing i shared with them yesterday was how parents there are some the mindsets some parents have about their children. Some mindset that are very unhealthy, and I'm going to share some of them. Number one mindset is when you say, "You are my child. Anything I say is what you will do. I give birth to you." In fact, some mothers will say, "If this breast is the breast that you sucked, you must listen to me." That is witchcraft, mommy. That is witchcraft. Don't do that. Another one will say, "Um." If I did not disobey my parents, you will not disobey me because you, you cannot disobey me. I'm your, I'm your father. I'm your mother. I did not give my mother a problem. You cannot give me a problem. Auntie, you don't have a robot. You have a child. And your child is a human being. It's only robots that cannot disobey instruction because they are programmed. And even with robots, self, when the program has flaws or bugs, they will disobey. So please, you're, function, you're, you're relating with a functional human being, not a robot. Another parent will say, Oh, you want to beat me? I'm talking and you're talking. Eh? I'm talking and you're arguing with me. Oh yeah, the next thing now, you're going to beat me. Oh yeah, come and beat me now. When I'm talking, you don't talk. You don't talk when I'm talking. This da 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 da. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Dear daddy. Dear mommy. Are you raising a yes child? Or are you raising a child that can be assertive, stand his or her ground, respond functionally to conversations, and argue when they feel that they are not on the same page with other people? Your guess is as good as mine. Many of us have raised children that cannot even stand opposition. Many of us have raised children that cannot even have a conversation. Have you noticed that many of us adults we can't have a civil conversation. We cannot disagree without being disagreeable. Have you noticed? We have people who don't agree with what we share, our beliefs and our perspectives. Then we get angry. We are asking ourselves, why would you oppose me? Why would you argue with me? Why this? Why that? Our actions and reactions show that we're not comfortable when people disagree with what we believe in. Guess where we picked it from? From our childhood. Because as a child... Who cannot argue with his parents, cannot challenge his parents, cannot discuss with his parents, cannot banter with the parents, cannot, you know, cannot share opposing views with the parents. When that child grows up, guess what? The child cannot accommodate a contrary view. Is that not what's happening in government? So the president, governors, I hear some governors, I think governor of um, Cross River and Aquaibom, the state governors of Cross River and Aquaibom, and also the president is guilty of this once an opposing voice comes up the next thing they'll send efcc after you send dss after you jail you and then it becomes a problem when you when you are intolerant of opposing views when you're intolerant of opposing views guess where you picked it from your childhood and we're unfortunately doing the same with our children we're not allowing our children to talk. We're not allowing them to discuss. We're not allowing them to debate. We're not allowing them to argue. We're not allowing them to share their own views that are different from our views. Shut up your mouth. Who put your mouth there? Am I your mate? I know better than you. Do you know what I've gone through? 
Do you know what happened in my childhood? Do you know this? Do you know that? We arrogate some form of superiority. We feel that we are superpowers over our children just because we believe that we gave birth to them. You don't own them. You are just a vehicle to bringing them to the world. You don't own your child. You do not own your child. I'm going to say it again. You were a steward. God used you as a vehicle to bring them to earth. They are functional human beings. They are complete by themselves. Your job is to train them to do the following. Number one, your first job as a parent is to teach your children to think. Your first job as a parent is to teach your children to think. If your children cannot think on their own to find answers to their challenges, big problem in your hands already. Your first job is to teach your children to think. If you have to do everything for your children, think for them, speak for them, defend them, think, do things for them, you are building a weak future in your child. And life will deal with that child. So, first task a parent must do, teach your children to think. Number two, teach your children to share how they feel. Come down from your high horses, parents. Come down from your pride. Come down from your superman, super ego. Come down from that, that dysfunctional place where you even were raised. And listen to these children. Let them express how they feel. Let them talk. Let them share. Let them be exuberant. Let them be foolish. Let them be whatever you call it. Let them express themselves first. Then number three, redirect their belief system in a functional way. When they say things that you don't believe in or when they say things that disturb you, you know what? Ask them, how did you come about this? What does this mean? Is this really true? If you put yourself in this person's shoes, how would you feel? Let them see in their beliefs the gaps. Let them see in their own beliefs what is not working. Some years ago, when my daughters were still very young, I used to have these conversations with them, and their mother used to say, no, they are too young. They can't be talking to you like an adult. They don't understand. Just tell them what to do. Join the order, order, order. I say, yeah, I understand, but I always prefer to have a conversation. Today, I'm very proud of what we've been able to achieve. Why? Because I have fun, fundamental conversations, even conversations that ordinarily are very tough to have. Ask them questions. These children know what they are doing. I've always said this many times. At the soul level, we are all the same age. If we go back to the soul, I am the same age with my child from the spiritual angle. It's just the timing of earth that I was sent ahead of her that makes me biologically older than her on earth. But they know what they are doing. They have answers. They think. They process information, they ask questions, they ask themselves questions. And if they cannot find access to you to ask you questions, they create answers by themselves or they get answers from other adults that pay attention to them. That is why many children go the wrong way. They go into vices, go into vulnerable positions, go into positions where they are, they are taken advantage of and they are abused and they go into silly, silly behaviors. Why? Because you didn't give them audience, someone else did. Because children will always ask questions. And where the worst case scenario, they don't find someone to give them answers, they will create their own answers. Does that not tell you that they know what they are doing? They do. Consciously and unconsciously, they are aware of what they are doing. So if there's anything I want you to remember today, parents, please listen to your children. Encourage conversations with them. Encourage them to speak up. Encourage them to think. Encourage them to be empathetic. Encourage them to, to weigh many options. Just teach them life skills and that is all. I hope this helps you, people. And I thank you for watching Diary of a Coach. This is Diary of a Coach, episode 256. And it's a beautiful beautiful um friday have a wonderful day tonight at 8 p.m is our webinar our first class on guilt and hurt management guilt and hurt management holds at 8 p.m tonight as a webinar on zoom if you're interested in joining please drop your message in the comment section and someone will contact you abasiodno says you're opening up realities bro impressive thank you sir then he says yes yes so adverse childhood experiences that's the way thank you for watching diary of a coach it's a beautiful day and god bless you bye